Welcome to my unboxing and first look. Now we've already looked at the Kraken X40. This is the Kraken X60 from NZXT. This is an all-in-one liquid cooler that uses dual 140, that's 140 millimeter fans, in order to achieve massive surface area. Now, I've said this time and time again. People always ask me, Linus, you know, which one's going to perform better? This water cooler or some other water cooler or this air cooler? Or, you know what, guys? It's really simple. With cooling, it always comes down pretty much to surface area. That's, that's all it is. Cooling is not sort of, it, it's, it's Newtonian physics. It's not complicated stuff. The more surface area you have, the more heat you're going to be able to dissipate, and the more quickly you're going to be able to do it. And you can see that uh, NZXT has unabashedly compared their Kraken X60 to a <coughs> standard 240 millimeter liquid cooler. So that would be a dual 120, saying it has 36% more surface area. Now, not only that, but that's also going to give you more than 36% more usable surface area because, remember, both that 120 mil version and the 140 mil version lose the same amount of area in dead space under the fan hubs, for example, or in any, any other kind of, of wasted space. So you're getting that, that, with that scalability comes even more usable area. Now the drawback being that most 140 millimeter fans are not actually very well optimized for static pressure. Now we do have fans that are the exception to this rule, such as the Noctua A-series ones that we're going to be using to test the Kraken X40, or rather X60, but it's something to be aware of in general. So here, let's cover whatever else NZXT has to say for themselves really quickly here. So high performance pump and copper block with interactive digital fan control, so it does come with a software element that allows you to sort of take advantage of that. Large tower support with extended 16-inch tubing. Ah, yes. So case support is going to be a bit of a challenge here because there's only so much you can do to, uh, to optimize for compatibility with various cases when you have two 140 millimeter fans that have to be at a particular spacing and are going to need a particular amount of room between themselves and any other components in order to be compatible. So you can see NZXT includes a couple of their black and white fans. I don't know that this is a you know, particularly high pressure design. Here's the Kraken controller version 1.1 software. You can download the latest off the NZXT website. But you can, like I said, replace them with Noctua's and then you'll know for sure that you have a pressure optimized design. Mounting hardware, there is very much included indeed. So we have everything you'll need for Intel and AMD for the last few generations of sockets. Everything from 775, 1155, 1156, 1366, 2011, AM2, AM2+, AM3+, AM4+, plus, I don't know, FM2+. Plus. Everything that you could pretty much want. You've also got instruction guide that pretty much tells you what to do. If you go on NZXT site, they're actually maintaining sort of a wiki style um, article where you can find out which cases are compatible. So there aren't many right now, but we're planning to jam this thing into a Vengeance C70 with a little bit of modification. So that should be, uh, that should be a bit of a treat there, you guys. Now, opening up the Kraken itself, you can see that it is significantly larger than the types of radiators we've seen before. In fact, let me grab one so that I can do a direct comparison here. And I found one. So holding it up next to sort of my old beat up, you know, this is actually the first water cooling radiator I ever bought. This is a GT Stealth 240. Um, so holding it up against that, it's all fine and good to show you guys this in terms of graphics, but when you actually hold them up next to each other, you can see that the sheer scale of the dual 140 millimeter radiator dwarfs the scale of a dual 120 millimeter radiator not radi radiator, not only in terms of length, but also in terms of width and just sort of in every possible dimension. Now the one area where the Kraken X60 is not sort of bigger than normal is in terms of the thickness. So this is a normal slim radiator, which means it's going to be competitive with something like an H100i, surface area for surface area, kind of pound for pound. It is not a thicker style radiator like we've seen with things like the H80. Now, another thing to note here is when we get really close have a look at it. I want you guys to check out the fin density. This isn't a hyper dense sort of radiator, but it's also not very loose. I'd say it's more like a medium fin density. That means that while it is, again, always important on a radiator to have a 
high pressure optimized fan, it's not going to be the end of the world if you don't have the highest pressure fan in the world on this particular rad. There we go, giving you guys a good look at that. You can kind of see through it. See, look, there's my hand on the other side. Ah, you can't see it. You have to hold the angle just right. Okay, let's see if we've missed anything that NZXT has to say for themselves on the box before we move ahead. I will be testing this on our new liquid cooling and just general cooling in general sort of uh, test platform. Large tower support, yeah, because that's the only thing it supports, with 16 inches of tubing. SATA power connector for easy installation, completely sealed system, backed by a two-year warranty. And all that is pretty much stuff that we've covered before. They also have a little graph on here that shows you how they figure the performance stacks up against its 120 millimeter competitors. So we will definitely be having a closer look at this on our own test bench because as interesting as it is for the manufacturers to say, this is how our product compares against the other things, you know, they're all using different fans, they're all using different test platforms, they're all potentially using different CPUs, so it's hard to get the numbers validated. So we're going to check with our 3930K overclocked with Noctua fans in a C70, and we're probably going to have to drill some holes in the case to get this to fit, which is sort of, you guys better get used to that idea, because dual 140 millimeter rad plus 140 millimeter fans, it's a lot of stuff. So the actual CPU block itself has uh, swivel fittings on it, which I'm really glad has become a bit of a standard thing. And what's great about that is just the fact that it makes installation easier. So no matter what angle your CPU cooler is installed at, you're going to be able to rotate the fittings to get to where you need to go. It's got pre-applied thermal compound. This is a high-quality thermal compound that Asatec uses. That's right, Asatec. If you guys have seen this ring retention design before, or you think you've seen it before, then you'll know why, and it's because it's used by, uh, by Asatec. So the original LCLC has come a long way in a lot of different ways. These swivel fittings are new from the original design. These LED lit logos on the top are new from the original design. The retention mechanism is way better than it used to be. So guys, instead of like kind of fussing around with it and trying to hold it in place, you just put this on, then you actually put this clip into place, and it holds it. Actually, hold on. Actually, I'm not sure if it works with the AMD one. <laughs> but at any rate, it works with the Intel one for sure. So here we go. So you put this piece on. There we go. There we go. Put that there. And then this guy goes here or something like that. You know what? I'm going to figure out how this works because I did it before. Now I'm confused. I'll be back. Let me go on top. How the hell does this work? I used to know. This is pathetic. No, I think I was doing it right. Metal grabs go. Yeah. Yeah, those go in there. And then this piece. Like clips in or something. It's too big, though, isn't it? Oh, well, maybe not. Nope. Yeah, see, it's right. Okay, there we go. And we're back. Yes, I had it right before. That is exactly how it works. So the bottom piece clips into place, which holds that top retention bracket into place so that you no longer have to fight with it while you're holding on a back plate and while you're trying to screw something into it. So it's a lot easier to use than before. Also, the tubing being used here is extremely flexible. So the original designs had like kind of a plastic tubing that actually couldn't bend like this and wasn't as easy to work with. It put a lot more strain on the components, but this is nice and soft and, and pliable. Uh, last but not least, the connectors that come off of it are now plentiful. So you can see there's a USB connector and it is extremely beautifully sleeved. So I don't know how well you guys are going to be able to see this in the camera here. Probably really well since we're using our awesome baller camera setup. But that is actually what allows it to interface with the USB port on your computer, which is what allows you to use the software control. Next, we've got the power input, or rather one of the power inputs. So that's for the pump itself. Then we've got a SATA power connector, which acts as an auxiliary power connector. And that right there is connected to four fan headers. So those are four four-pin fan headers that you can use to plug up to four fans in push-pull into the pump itself. So that allows you to monitor and control those fans the same way that you normally would. 
except that they're all, like if they were plugged into your motherboard header, except that they're all controlled through the software and they're all plugged in through the Kraken X60 itself. So I think that pretty much wraps this up. Follow up, guys. Make sure you're subscribed so that you'll see the performance testing. And don't forget to, well, subscribe to, see, this is my standard outro. So now that I already told you to subscribe, I've totally ruined it. But don't forget to subscribe to Linus Tech Tips for more unboxings, reviews, and other computer videos. Can you see through it? Can you see through it? <gasps> I think we're done here.